I'm in Toronto. Oh, you're Toronto. Oh, great. I just, uh, um, yeah, I was just talking about it. I loved shooting in, in, in your city. It was so much fun. And the, I mean, I'm, uh, I, I have to leave by just going, the crew was spectacular. And there's so much production that uh, you know, feel very fortunate that we really had a great, great group of people. And, and, uh, and the city was just perfect for this show. I have been going to sets in Toronto for a long time, maybe not as much over the pandemic, but it's, it is amazing what has happened here. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed that. I really had a good time. So I'm looking for, I hope uh, we get a second season, if, if only to have an excuse to come back. Well, you know, I got to say, first of all, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely geeking out about talking to you because what you've created over the years has been phenomenal. And I love the grit of this series and what you've brought to this storytelling. It, you know, it's a very unique style. What would yeah. you Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say, what would you say was important to you about adapting it from the original British, you know, kind of format to bring it to US TV? You know, it was it was actually it was so it was a Sony uh, had had gotten the rights from uh, the BBC and Jimmy McGovern, who I'm like a giant fan. Uh, you know, I, I geeked out over that because uh, he created Cracker, which I you know was one of my favorite shows of all time with Robbie Coltrane. So, but I watched the show and it had been done about 12 years ago or 13 at this time, and 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 so and the episodes you know had like Olivia Coleman and had you know Andy Serkis and 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 Sean Bean, but and I liked I really liked it, but I felt like the I felt like th- something clicked in me. I said, cause I've been struggling, I think as a human being, as a writer, as a person living, you know, and a person of a certain age living in the world today about how much things are changing and how disoriented I am uh, about like, and again, whether it's race, gender, power, uh, particularly social media, um, that has been this, like, I think terribly corrosive, uh, you know, uh, you know. Now we're all like in possession of alternate facts, and how does that impact uh, us as people? Uh, we're just, you know, things are changing faster. I think than we can get our heads around around it, kind of culturally, um, legally, morally. And so this show, to me, was like a great way to tell short stories. Uh, you know, um, to really, and and also not to hold an audience hostage over, um, you know eight or 10 or 24 episodes. I mean, I can't even imagine when I look at that, I go, how the hell did we do that? But I don't think people have the patience for that now. And I think the, you know, the, the John Landgraf, you know, peak TV is something we've all been feeling. I'm overwhelmed of it. So I liked actually not burdening an audience, giving them something, uh, giving them a lot of bang for their buck. And I, and I really kind of had, a, and, and to me, this was a great sort of Trojan horse and it looks like a courtroom drama. It feels and tastes and like like one. So it has those familiar things. And I think the idea of never quite knowing what happens till the very end was just like a you know a, a narratively compelling, st- structurally challenging thing to do. But behind it all, I think it's so much more. It's about it is about ultimately so much more than innocence or guilt. And mm-hmm. I was really allowed. To go for it. I mean, I, I I recognize that some of these stories and they really get, I don't know how many, you know, you, you may have seen, but I'm very, very proud of them. And they all are impact. They're impactful. And I said to Fox, I said, I, I've always been a believer. And I know it sounds maybe, um, you know, pretentious, but you need every good show in my estimation has like a contract with the audience. It, it's not explicit, but like when you watch This Is Us, you know, you're going to cry. When you watch Curb, you know, you know, you're going to go, oh my God, you know, you're going to laugh but you're also going to be like, you're going to cover your eyes. Like in 24, we wanted the audience to, you know, leave, you know, breathless and not, they can't believe it's over. And where's more on this one. I really wanted people to shut up and, and just like be affected and to turn to someone if they were watching it with someone and and talk. And to me that, and, and again, so that's like the hope you have. And one of the things in the first three episodes, I'm getting, texts and emails and calls from people, you know, some of them friends, some of them acquaintances, some colleagues whom I haven't spoken to in years sometimes. And they said, I just got to say, I watch your show. And I talked to my, you know, my watch with my kid and we talked for an hour afterward or, you know, and I'm getting a lot of them, which tells me I'm not getting all of them. So if, if it's happening on, you know, a couple dozen times to me, I feel like it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. But of course, all under the banner of entertaining people and, and and compelling people to come back and watch more. 
did it feel like a funny shift in the sense that you're not how is it is it liberating or is it a funny shift to not be drawing out a character over an entire season where you have one character who's the core and this instead you're dealing with as you said like short stories yeah well it has a, it has a challenge and i have to say the learn my learning curve i think was fairly steep which is that you develop an instinct about what a show is and it, you, you can't really quantify it but you feel it, it you know and so i knew that i had to gra- you know, grab people and lean in and make them like say, okay, why am I going to watch after the first 10 minutes and stay? So I, I sort of started realizing how much can I give that fills in that I give people enough ammunition from the, uh, uh, just to say, to even begin to speculate what happened, but also find, you know, find that person before the shit hits the fan or before the thing happens. And so how do we get a character, like uh, do a steep, deep dive into a character in the first eight minutes, that was a challenge. I, I didn't anticipate how difficult it was, but I think I've learned, I've kind of decoded it quite a bit, a, a bit. So you, I can't rely on the pilot episode of a, of a, of an eight season series. Let's meet Jack Bauer. Let's meet whatever Carrie or Fox Mulder, whomever. Um, and it's liberating. It's really liberating. It's challenging, but it really is awesome to tell a story, get in there. I've likened it to a haiku or to a, a sonnet. Like huh. you have to color inside and even doing it for network TV, it's not like I'm doing it for Amazon or HBO. It has to be 43 minutes and 24 seconds. So, and what's interesting and kind of blows my mind is how your brain could do the math in a way. You just, in, you, you start intuiting how much story works. And I have to say, there's nothing that's on the cutting room floor. Like, oddly enough, this time work, like it, it, it's doing the job. It's It's just the right amount of time to tell these particular stories, I think. It, it works incredibly well. I, I'm also curious, you've got uh, these amazing people that you're working with that you're bringing in for each episode. What was it like, you know, kind of finding the right people for these? And, and what was it like working with them? It, it was, you know, usually on a TV show, the thing is like, again, you have your cast and then a, a director comes in <clears throat> or actors come in and oh, the leads are always like, you know, everyone is like, it, it's like people are invaders kind of. We start over. The, the director gets to do have pick their cast, so it is so much more analogous to a movie experience. Everyone's on the same page, which is they're all at the first page, and 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 it. I didn't realize the energy that that would uh, uh, create. The challenges too, because of course, when you're doing a regular show, everyone knows they're they all know each other. They're comfortable. They're in the same sets. They're in the same place. This is like what? what so there was that the the, the healthy creative fear accompanied everyone, but also the enthusiasm. And we got like, who knew like, oh, the scheduling was terrible. Like how do, you know, Marley Mountain is only available. It's like a Rubik's cube. She can do here and here, Billy Porter here and there. So we like had to, it's like a crossword puzzle. And I, we didn't know or whatever, you know, uh, but like we were, you, you, you know, but you start finding yourself, but I just can't believe it worked is really what it comes down to because mm-hmm. it could have just crashed a thousand different times. Between that, COVID also, scheduling, and just as a labor-intensive matter, casting, I mean, casting, uh, it's like casting a movie every single time. And what was gratifying was that we got such great response from the talent, like, you know, Margot Martindale, Molly Parker, Michael Chiklis, like people read it, Molly and, uh, I mean, my, my Marley and Billy Porter, just, I mean, that was like, oh, let's, God, would Billy Porter ever do this? And then, like, he read it and loved it. And I'm like, wow. like, and then. So it's been so much fun for me and uh, to, to uh, frankly, just to wa- watch some of these people work, um, people who I otherwise probably would not have had the chance to work with. Well, thank you very much for the time. I, I can't wait to see the rest of the season. Thanks, Andrew. I hope you like it. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully I'll see you in season two. Yes. <laughs> I'll see you in Toronto. Come and visit the set. <laughs>